This is Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast with your hosts, Brandon Spinner and Michael Burns. Hello and welcome into Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. I am Brandon Spinner alongside my co-host, Michael Burns. Mikey, how are you doing over last week, my man? I'm doing all right. The weather has finally heated up. I've gotten to uh, get out more and get the girls out on. We we go on uh, popsicle walks at night. Right bedtime. Popsicle walks. Popsicle walks. Bonnie Bonnie has always done it and has learned now. She can eat the popsicle fast enough where it doesn't melt on her hand. <laughs> Do you see uh, the napkin that I put under her popsicle that she holds is soaked by you know the end of the walk and usually her Whoa. popsicle falls off the stick before she actually finishes it aren't there usually tears involved not too bad because i let her grab it off the sidewalk and eat it <laughs> hey five second roll uh it's not gonna hurt <laughs> <laughs> now the more important question is what flavor popsicles are we talking uh for how often we were going we would buy the, the like Costco or the, the Costco or the Kroger's uh, just, you know, eat popsicles mm-hmm. that would have dual popsicles and you have to break them in half. But I went all out uh, this last week and I bought rainbow popsicles. I'll tell rainbow you what, popsicles? I've had, I've had two myself. They're pretty delicious. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to Google what a rainbow popsicle is. It's got the uh, all the colors. It starts with purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Oh, the okay i see it by popsicle well no that's different okay so this one has all of them oh okay i see it i see it it looks like a cylinder There's, yeah um ours are not a cylinder but yeah they usually are i think the classic one's a cylinder and there's a there's yeah, a cocoa melon song i think that they... grape strawberry apple orange and pineapple yeah i would only eat the first three flavors and then be like all right i'm done dude it's a popsicle i hate pineapple I hate pineapple. You hate pineapple? I will pineapple? literally puke. I will literally throw up. Pineapple is like an automatic gag. Ugh. I love pineapple. I love me some popsicles. I hate me some pineapple. Uh, but this is Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. Welcome Not a popsicle, to popsicle bourbon and baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are, hey, how does that fit in? Bourbon, baseball, and popsicles, just like apple pie and Chevrolet, right? Baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Uh all things American, bourbon, baseball, and popsicles. But this is episode 26. Welcome in. If this is your first episode, welcome. Thanks for joining us. If you're a longtime barrel head, welcome back. As you've noticed over the last couple of weeks, we've introduced our podcast with the best players to wear the number of our podcast. So this week, who do you think is the best player to ever wear number 26? Mikey, I know that you love to compare jersey numbers, and you know all things about jersey numbers. So who do you think? Um, my quick Google, Wade Boggs is the name that pops up. Um, yeah, there are two names, I think, that deserve the discussion. And Wade Boggs is one of them. I think Billy Williams is the other one that you can discuss. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, would I mean, his, num- not... his name's retired with the Cubs, at mm-hmm. least. His is retired with the Cubs. I don't think the Red Sox have retired Wade Boggs because that was the only team he played for as the number 26 when he went to the Yankees. And then at the time, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, he was 12 for both of those teams. But he spent all of his years with the Red Sox, 11 seasons wearing the number 26. Hall of Famer. Uh, in 2005, there's some controversy behind that <laughs> because you know that the controversy about Wade Boggs in the Hall of Fame. No. So he went into the Hall of Fame. He spent 12 years or 11 years with the Red Sox, 11 or 12 years, and then a couple years with the Yankees, four or five, and then he went to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays for the last two of his career. How he could went you into go the from Hall- the Red Sox to Yankees? I don't get that. It happens really a lot how, more than you I, think. It does. Jacoby right. Ellsbury, Johnny Damon, right? Or vice yeah. versa, Yankees to the Red Sox. didn't. Uh, it's happened quite a bit. But when he did that, and then he went to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays at the time, for his last two years of his career, where he still hit 300, but he was nowhere near the Wade Boggs that he was in Boston. He, went into, the, in he, went, into the all, all, uh, he went into the Hall of Fame. As a devil ray. Devil ray? No, he didn't. Yeah. That was what? part of his contract, I believe. I believe that was part of his contract, is if you sign here, you, like, we'll give you this amount of money or whatever, and you have to go in as a devil ray. So that's what he did. 
What? What yeah. a sellout. Yeah. What a sellout. He was a 12-time All-Star, uh, two-time Gold Glove. He won the World Series in 1996, five-time batting title. He had a career on-base percentage of 415, an OPS of 858. And he, w- he was one of those, I'm not going to slug, but I'm going to get on base and hit. And he had a career batting average of 328 with only 118 home runs. Billy Williams, however, 426 home runs, a career batting average of 290. Uh, he had the OPS that was just underneath because he didn't get on base as much as Boggs did. Their numbers as a slash line are actually very close, except Bob, Boggs' on base percentage is slightly higher, but Boggs had a much higher war uh, over the same length. I'm going to lead Wade Boggs on this one, I think. Uh, both of them are Hall of Famers. Billy Williams, of course, his number flies on the foul pole at Wrigley. But uh, I'm probably leaning Wade Boggs on this one. Who you so think? you're just saying who's the best 26, or what are we calling this episode? Uh, well, who's the best 26? Yeah, I think uh, the numbers, I think war, let's see, war is not even close. 91.4 no, he... for Boggs and 63.7 for Billy Williams. So mm-hmm. that helps even decide though... if you're on a line there. Yeah, Billy's got 300-plus more home runs, but his batting average is about 40 points lower. Mm. Wade scored more runs. He he only stole 24 bases. He's not a speed demon. Neither was Billy. <laughs> Billy only stole 90. But RBI, like if you were looking for slugging, you're going Billy Williams. But if you're looking for a pure let's get on base and make things happen kind of guy, uh, and also he played at the f- third base side of the field, and also he was a 12-time All-Star. 12 times. He did Wade it in less time. Too than Billy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And All Billy right. ended his career right. in you Oakland. Me. I think I'm going Wade Boggs. Trying not to let the Cubs them. Oh, take I was over. totally let, I was totally letting the Cubs take over until these last few uh, stats. <laughs> um. So this is the Wade Boggs episode. I don't know if that's mm. actually the name of the title, but that is episode 26. Wade Boggs. Cheers to you, sir. You are the best number 26 to ever play the game. So, we are Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. You can find us on YouTube. Our subscriber count continues to climb. We're up to 160 oh. now. At Last week, it was like 144, so we've gone up 16. Make sure you go head on over there. Subscribe to us at Barrels and Barrels Pod. Again, that letter N in the middle of both barrels. You can find us there. We're putting out exclusive content and shorts there, recapping some plays of the day or maybe some players of the weekend or even players of the week. Exclusive content there. Breaking news. Some hot news. Uh, even some in li- in-game in live home runs that we catch on our phones. Uh, those have gotten some great plays. Anything play, exciting, on baby. Facebook. It's always there. Yeah. It's always there, and it's always exclusive. Barrels and Barrels on YouTube. You can find us on Instagram as well. Last week, we hit 1,000. We're climbing there. And also on Facebook, where we're rapidly growing. We're now above 400 followers. Just three or four weeks ago, that was around 150. So we're really jumping there. A lot of our fans trending towards Facebook. And you can find us on Twitter, Barrels and Barrels Pod. Uh, It's actually Barrels and Barrels. There's no pod at the end because Twitter limits the amount of characters. We're up to 162 followers there. Don't forget to listen to us. We are on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, really trending lately, as well as Stitcher and Google Podcasts. Please rate us and review us. Last I checked, we were still 15 out of 15 for five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. We need more on Spotify, so head on over there. Please click the five-star or give us a rating and your review. And uh, if you do, we'll give you a shout-out on the podcast. And speaking of shout-outs, I mentioned anytime you subscribe to our YouTube page, we'll give you a shout-out. Here are some of the recent subscribers. The Cobros, Thomas Powers, Rizzler4, Marcellus Scott, and Fleeting Improv. So thank you for all of you who have just joined in. As I mentioned, is this your first time with Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast, we welcome you. Thank you. We start with bourbon to chime right off the top, and that's where we're turning to now. And for the second week in a row, Mikey Burns will take the helm of the bourbon portion of the baseball and bourbon podcast. All right. So today we have Old Elk Cigar Cut. Um, mm. Usually I'm not a big Old Elk fan, but when I was at Benny's Beverage Depot, if it's not at Benny's, it's not worth drinking. That's right. Not an, hashtag not an ad. Um, 
And I was chatting up the guy, talking, you know, oh, hey, I do some bourbon reviews. I'm looking for something good to grab here while I'm at Benny's Beverage Depot. If it's not worth drinking, if it's not at Benny's, it's not worth drinking. Um, and he no said, free yeah, I can't believe this uh, old Elk Cigar Cut's still on the shelf. We had some guys who asked us to call us whenever this got in. And so I was like, well, that sounds like the guy I'm going to grab then. Um, <laughs> So have you had a cigar blend bourbon before, Brandon? I have not. They've really gained in popularity as of late. I know that. I know a lot um, of people are hard after those uh, cigar blends from Starlight. Those have really jumped off the shelves from what I'm seeing, but they're really beginning to get popular in all sorts of brands. Right. Joseph Mangus, I know, is a, one, is a good mm-hmm. one. I've heard. I haven't had it. This will be my first cigar cut Can you cigar say that blend. again? Joseph Mangus? I think it's Magnus. <laughs> Magnus. Oh, so I just flipped the G and the N, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> ah, all right. So, oh, so Old Elk Cigar Blend, go. Old Elk Cigar Blend. So if, if you don't know what a cigar blend is, it's a bourbon whiskey that is specially blended with cigar tobaccos in it. Um, usually okay. they are blended with a, a low-proof bourbon and a high-proof bourbon. This particular cigar cut comes in at 110.6 proof. Um, This specific blend has four different finishes. It has a sherry cask finish, an armagnac cask finish, a port cask finish, and a cognac cask finish. All Mm -hmm. with ages 1.5 years, 1.25 years, 3 to 8 months, and 3 to 6 months, respectively. So finish for that length of time. Yes. Okay. Yes, fin- finished in those four different casks. This blend of, of high malt bourbons was at least six years. At least six years. So the minimum is six, six years. years. Right. And is I, is this an MGP distillate? Do you know? I don't think so because of the mash bill. Okay. The mash bill is 51% corn, 34% malted barley, so high malted barley, and 15% rye. That's interesting. Yeah, not one I'm usually familiar with. And usually a malted barley um, is usually on the lower end of things. The rye and the malted mm-hmm. barley are a little flip-flopped. And I'm, I uh, think Chattanooga is more malt than right, rye. Right, yeah. They're, they're, uh, I yeah. guess that's the high malt, maybe, mm-hmm. term. Um, usually the couple of high malts I've had are a little too... Malty for me. Mal- malty, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. I get it. Um, I know what you're saying. Right. But I, this is right up. I, this is right around the good proof, I think, for us where we where we tend to enjoy it. One one ten point six. Um, it's got a beautiful nose. Over, really, you stiffen over there. Yeah. I got right off the bat vanilla, caramel, and tobacco. Of course, that would. I wrote tobacco down before you even said anything. I didn't know that. I thought it was just it would pair well with a cigar. That's what I always thought a cigar cut or a cigar blend was. Right. Because you don't lose the flavor with the cigar. But, I mean, I pulled tobacco out. I even For got sure. a little bit of, like, a floral and a darker fruit out of it. Mm-hmm. The sherry cask is the longest finish, the 1.5 years. Well, there's the dark fruit for me. These are all fruity finishes. Sherry, armagnac, port, and cognac. Mm -hmm. I get the same thing. I get immediately the tobacco, some leather. Um, That sherry comes right through as well. I don't get a strong, as I let, I get a late oak uh, sniffles there. There's a little bit. There's definitely a little bit, but it's not overpowering. I'll go in for so, a first look hoder here as you go in. Hmm. I get leather right off the bat. Like very leathery. Um, right. There's some oak there. I definitely pulled a sherry. Definitely some fruitness right there in the middle too. What's that finish you get? Malty. It's got a malty finish to me. Like it's, it's clearly a malt. To me, and it's. I know it's all in the name, but it's ashy. It's an ashy finish, like so the ashtray I said yes. about the winter, uh, the winter whiskey from. Yes, that's what you get. Is it an ashtray? I get an ashtray finish. Beginning is leather. You get some fruit, and then it ta- and then it's like ashtray finish. 
and it's got to be the blend. Maybe it's the tobacco. Now I'm not a cigar guy. I've never. I can't say I've smoked a cigar. I know, Brandon. You've never smoked a cigar. I've never. I well, I had a grandma that was a smoking addict, and going to her house with brown ceilings as a kid. Yep, I understand that. So I've never been able to touch anything um, smoking related, and so I've never had a cigar, and can't really. So I can't relate to the blend of the tobacco and cigar cut, you know. Mm-hmm. Or even, you know, hey, bourbon pairs well, bourbon and whiskey pairs well with cigar. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I don't know that. <laughs> I enjoy I enjoy a nice cigar with a pour, and I think that this would pair extremely well. I do agree that it's got more of a tobacco-y or like an ashy t- end to it. I think there's a lot of malt towards the back, and I think that the the front half is really powerful. To me, it's like a roller coaster ride. It enters, it comes in warm, it comes in leathery, it's got a little tingle to it. I think the middle portion, I pull out a little bit of that fruit, that sherry comes in. It starts to mellow a bit, and then the the start to the finish is a little underwhelming. But the more you talk and the more you chew on it, and I haven't taken a sip in about a minute or so, I would say that it's starting to come back. It's starting to have a little bit more of a back end bite to it. Not a bite, but it's starting to talk back to me with some more flavoring. A lot of oak and a lot of that tobacco and leather at the end. The tobacco, I think. It's hard for me to say, but it's not a familiar taste for me. Mm-hmm. And it's it's earthy. It's ashy for me. I mean, maybe, maybe I think that earthy is a better is tone. The tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not, not, not enjoying that earthiness. You're not a fan? Uh-uh. <laughs> so, my, so I think it's because you haven't had a tobacco product in your career, or in your life, or... <laughs> my career. Uh, yes, in your career. <laughs> Everything <laughs> relates to your career. No, that, so, that, that probably makes sense. I'm, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that, you know, I can, I can see where a cigar and a whiskey could pair together it's a dryness mm-hmm. with a flavorful drink right there so should i should i dip the cigar in it and like chew on it to see if it is that something you do with cigars you chew no <laughs> well some people <laughs> like to chew some people do like to just gnaw on the end like the bottom nub as it's like, like chewing a, tobacco right yeah and it pretty close is so what do you rate it i'm assuming you're leaning towards the lower end of our scale let me take one more sip as you go through that if You're new here. We've got a rating scale based off of baseball. We go from Hall of Famer, which is the best of the best, uh, as we said, with Wade Boggs and Billy Williams. 1% of baseball players make the Hall of Fame. The next is an all-star. You've got all-stars on every team. You've got all-stars on your shelf. Those are like your most prized bottles. And then you go to everyday player. It's just like a baseball player. Always in your lineup. Always on my shelf. Bench player, one of those that comes and mixes it up. You have it on your shelf just to mix things up. Pour it once a month, maybe every couple of weeks or something along those lines, just like a pinch hitter or that guy who comes in to fill in and spot start. And then there's designate for assignment, which you get cut off the team. That means you're finding another home. So as I asked Michael, Michael, where do you rate this? Old Elk Cigar Blend Whiskey. This guy, uh, he's being brought into my office. He's being sat down. I hang my head a little bit and I look into the neck of the bottle and tell him, buddy, you're going to have to find somewhere else, somebody else's glass to go into because you've been designated for assignment, boy. So Michael has cut the Old Elk Cigar Blend off his team with a designate for assignment. I think part of it is because you don't know what the tobacco taste is, what that ash is. I, my only DFA was the winter whiskey from New Riff. Right. I thought that had a very strong ashtray taste to it. I don't get that from this. I've got this is a flavor explosion in my mind. I've got a bunch going on. I find this very complex. Uh, there's I can see that leather. There's caramel, vanilla. I got that sherry. Uh, I get the dark fruits from those finishes. <laughs> this is where our palates differ. Because I'm going with an all-star, baby. Oh, let's go. <laughs> I can see the complexities in it, 
but that earthy tobacco flavor for me is just a is just a no go. It, it just turn destroys off. it. It just destroys it. And that's what makes we've we said it early on in the podcast. I don't think we've said it in a while, but that's what makes whiskey in this community great. Is everybody's got their own type that they like. Every flavor is different for everybody. Some person might pick up a bottle that they think is the best thing in the world and another person might spit at it, right? So that's what makes this community great. That's what makes just whiskey in general great is everybody has their own thoughts and opinion. And uh, clearly Michael and I differ. Sometimes we're right in line and sometimes we're not. So you may align with my palate. You may align with Michael's palate if you haven't smoked before. If you're not into the tobacco type of thing, this may not be up your alley. To me, I think this is very delicious. What Greg, uh, Greg Metz did over at uh, Old Elk. I think this is fantastic, sir. I can see the. I can taste the different complexities in it. I can taste what you're talking about. That leather up front. That the fruit in the middle, um, and that it's got very many different levels. But again, so yeah, right. Like Brandon said, if you enjoy um, a good cigar. This is probably right up your alley. I've I've heard nothing but good things about cigar blends usually. Um so I was very surprised, very surprised that and I was excited when I got it. I got it. You were um I when I in Chicago, right? And I was like, guess what I got? Brought it home, couldn't wait. And as soon as Brandon got this sample, we we're we're, we're reviewing it. And uh Yeah, I got, I got this it. the other day and it was put at the top of the list. So the excitement level was there, and oh man, I'm, well, I'm, I'm upset for you because you got. I'm, ex- I'm upset, but <laughs> I'm excited for you. That's fantastic that you think it's an all star. It's great to find fantastic bourbons and enjoy the ones that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. I was really excited to try this. Like the moment you said that you got it, I was like, oh my god, that's awesome because I've been looking for this. Uh, and then you said it comes in around 120, 120 to one hundred and thirty bucks. Yep. So it's a pretty penny. Uh, but I do think that if you are a fan of cigar cuts or if you like to smoke with your bourbon, this will be right up your alley. It did win gold at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition for the Cask Finish Series Cigar Cut. So congratulations to Old Elk, who took home two golds this year, uh, and they won for the Infinity Blend 2022. So I really enjoy what Old Elk's put out. We did the Armagnac um, Cask Finish Armagnac. That was one we opened together. Um, I can never say. Did that we? Word. Did, did we do that, that one? We opened that on New Year's that's Eve. We didn't old, review I, it. That's the only one I've had. Of oh, old oak. Otherwise, I, I, I've actually. I want to say no. That's the only one I've had, and I don't think I enjoyed that one either. So I've always been kind of put off by old, by old elk. elk. I think I've had I, one other old elk, and I didn't enjoy it either. I found I the more that it. that. I found the more that that was open, the better it got. Yeah, the more the bottle that that opened, and I was kind of dis, disappointed when I finished it. I still have the empty over there. But well, hey, if if someone would if someone would like to try a sample of this old elk and is listening here, shoot us shoot us a message on Instagram or email at barrelsandbarrels at gmail dot com, and uh, let us know if you want to if you want to get into this uh, old elk cigar cut. Yeah, and while you do that, order a t-shirt. We've got t-shirts available, 25 bucks a t-shirt. Just shipped out 20 of them. A bunch of people just posted their pictures of them. And another guy, Mo, just ordered one this week, and his was just shipped out. So head on over there, email. They fit too. They're not only comfy, they fit like those uh, classic tees, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I've got a belly and no, and my arms aren't being shown. Dude, they fit. And I mean, look at Brandon there. It's and like it's it like severe weather's coming in or something. This guy, <laughs> <laughs> the guns are out, so severe weather must be coming. So they are ultra comfy, and we have our friends over at Charlie Mike Never Weekend, uh, who we've partnered with to make those shirts. So thank you to Charlie Mike Never Weekend for twisting, and turning, and getting those t-shirts made and sent out. Again, twenty five bucks if you want a t-shirt. You can email us as Michael just put it out. Barrels and barrels at gmail dot com. Man, I'm kind of bummed for you because I know how excited you were. To to find this right. and you were like i'm taking this i'm taking this it's so. such a cool i don't know if all the old elks have this tree mm-hmm. trunk cap they do okay it's it's supposed to be like the uh antler of an elk that's what it looks like as it yep so as a like a deer horn or deer antler that's oh, what it so looks like closer to the skull it's an antler okay yeah 
Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And sometimes you can find um, the old elk bottles have an elk head pourer on it. I've, I'm disappointed in myself for not buying a couple of those when I've seen them. But have you seen those? They have like, you know how sometimes you can put a pourer on the top of a bottle to pour oh, at a bar. Oh, yeah. And it comes it's out. The, yeah. yeah it's, it comes out the mouth of the elk. Uh, I didn't realize really they were cool. out of Colorado. So that yeah, Colorado. Makes sense a little bit of their, maybe their, their flavor isn't, the heat, there's not, not as much heat there to get deeper into the wood and pull that flavor out. Could be. I, I do think it's MGP as well. I think they okay. still for Old Elk, or at least they have in the past. I don't know what it they're doing. It just says I, bottled and by Old Elk Distillery Colorado. That would be my guess then is someone distilled it. And I know Greg is more so blending right now, which is what this was with four different blends and four different finishes, just like his Infinity Blend, um, yep. which he does every year, which is a really cool story. If you haven't checked out the Infinity Blend story, go check that out. Just Google uh, Old Elk Infinity Blend and see what Greg Metz is doing with those. Those are really cool. We tried that at uh, Brinkman's a couple of weeks ago, Michael, and we both enjoyed it then, I think. Uh, yeah. We had had 23 pours or so at that point, but I think that I remember keeps you growing saying every time we talk good. about it. <laughs> well, we had 18, I swear, at Nashville Barrel Company, but it, it felt <laughs> yeah, like that, that number was. again. That number too keeps yeah. growing. Uh, but that is the bourbon portion of Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. We'd love to hear your thoughts if you've already tried Old Elk Cigar Blend. We want to know what you think, so comment that on our Instagram page or right on over to Facebook or Twitter, or just send us an email, as Michael mentioned. So we're just going to transition to baseball now. I always like to use a trivia question um, that I try to stump Michael on. He He's about 50-50 on some of these. So, Michael. Oh, thank you for that stat. I think, I think that's yeah. a little high. I, I think, think that number is a little high. high. I was trying to give you a little thank credit. You. Trying to, thank you. Trying to bump you up. Uh, so, Justin Verlander just did something last week that we'll touch on here in a second. He won a game against the Reds, which made it th all 30 MLB teams he's secured a win against. So who is the only Hall of Famer to have won versus all 30 Major League Baseball teams? I got two names in mind. I'm gonna tell I you think both. I know one of the names that you're going to say. I'm going to say Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. Okay. Because they both played in the NL and AL. Diamondbacks, Expos, Red Sox for Schilling. So I'm going to go with Kurt Schilling. You're going with Kurt Schilling? Yes, if it's Randy Johnson, I swear. It is Randy Johnson, because Kurt Schilling is not in the Hall of Fame, my friend. Oh, is he not? Not, not no, yet? He's or not just yet. not at all? He's not, uh, he is not at all in the Hall of Fame. He's been... That is one of the old-timey baseball Hall of Fame voters. We're going to keep him off because of his politics, and we don't like what he thinks and uh, says. But yeah. Randy Johnson is the, the only Hall unit. of Famer. Uh, originally, I was like, oh, it's got to be Greg Maddox. But he I'm stuck in today's AOEs. game yep. where he, no, the, he didn't have a win versus the Angels. I don't think he beat Baltimore. He had like four teams that he didn't beat in his career. Uh, but Justin Verlander did it last week against the Reds. He is one of just five, I believe, active players in the league to do it. Um, at least last oh, there are active guys. Uh, Scherzer's done it. Garrett Cole oh, but your has question done it. was Hall of Fame guys. Okay. Hall of Fame, yeah. So he, Randy Johnson is the only Hall of Famer. Verlander was the 21st player to do it. Um, did Kurt Schilling do it, but he's not in the Hall of Fame? Do we know that uh, answer? So there are 21 of them who have done it. Kurt Schilling did it for, he completed it in 2004 when he beat the Boston Red Sox. Mm. So the four active players to have done it, Max Scherzer, Zach Grinke, Garrett Cole, and Justin Verlander, Bartolo Colon, John Lackey, Tim Hudson, Kyle Loesch has done it. Dan Hayward has done it. A.J. Burnett, Derek Lowe, Vincente Padilla, well, that's a name, Javier Vasquez, Barry Zito, I, we already talked about Randy Johnson, Jamie Moyer, Woody Williams, Kurt Schilling, Terry Mulholland, Kevin Brown, and Al Leiter. You'll notice that all of these are after 2002 because interleague play interleague. didn't really start mm -hmm. until the 90s. And then uh, there were only, what, 28 teams before the Rockies and the Rays and the Diamondbacks and all that with expansion back in the 90s. So uh, right. it's recent day, but uh, I would say that Scherzer, 
and Verlander are probably Hall of Famers on this list. Uh, once they retire, I do think Schilling deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. That's the only other name on the list I think that would be a Hall of Famer. But, uh, yeah, Verlander did it last week versus the Cincinnati Reds. And one of the names go. on the list, Zach, Zach Grinke, did another thing last week. He struck out his 1,000th career batter, not 1,000th overall, 1,000 different batters total. 1,000 different. What's his total strikeout numbers? Do you have that? Uh, let me pull that up real quick. Uh, so Grinke is at 2,914 career strikeouts. So he's just 86 Ooh. off. That's what I was I don't curious know if, about, how far I away he was from 3,000 Ks. I don't know if he's going to make it this year. He may make it next year. He's having a rough year this year at 5.01 ERA. He's 1-4. in four. He's on the Royals. He's only got 32 strikeouts this year. Last year, he only struck out 73, and the year before, he struck out 120. The last time he had 150 or more was 2019 with the Diamondbacks and the Astros. So... um uh, I don't know if he'll make 3,000 this year. I, it's They're projecting him to be around 70 strikeouts, so that's only 40 more. So he would need another year. Whether or not he does that, uh, it's going to be up to whether or not he wants to play through year 40. He's 39 and a half years old. Um, and he's on a one-year contract, so he did, he's not yeah. contracted to play baseball next year. Correct. One year, $8.5 million, he'll be a free agent. He's pitched for 18 years, so he's had a long career. Uh Maybe borderline Hall of Famer, uh, 3.45 ERA. I don't know. I think that that's just a guy who's been in the league for a long he time. He was drafted in 2002. Uh, First round, six overall. By the Royals. And he pitched okay with the Royals. He really started to come into his own in like 07, 08, I think. With the Brewers, right? Uh, no, he pitched very well. It was 09. He had a 2.16 ERA uh, with the Royals. And then he went to the Brewers two years later. Um, in 2011, uh, he wasn't there long, and then he went to the Dodgers, where he had a very good stretch in 2015. Okay, I'd okay. say Hall of Very Good, Hall of Very Good for Zach Grinky. But yeah, he just struck out his 1,000th different batter, which is impressive. I believe uh, that's only been done four other times. Oh uh, yeah, so Grinky joins Randy Johnson, Roger Clemens, Greg Maddox, and Nolan Ryan as the only other players to have strucking struck out. 1,000 different Strucking. players. So he's only the... F- <laughs> yeah, struck in, struck, striked, stricked out. Struck. Struck in out. Struck out. Struck, striked, stricken him. He's done a 1,000 different batters. So I find that Striking very impressive. Me. When you're on a list with those four, pretty impressive. It means you pitch a long time and uh, you strike out a lot of people. So right. congrats to Grinky. Speaking yeah. of so, strikeouts. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of strikeouts, Brandon... Um, I, I, I'm a I'm a pitcher growing up. I still pitch in adult league, so pitchers are always my favorite. And uh, striking out is being a high case strikeout pitcher is, I think, the most desirable. Um, so I wanted to get into our, the the top strikeout leaders in baseball right now. Um, do you know who who number one is, Brandon? It's got to be Spencer Strider. He's it's got to be too. Spencer Strider. Yeah. No, so not He's counting like 15, tonight. He's He's got a 15.4 or whatever K per nine. So it has to be him and Evaldi, I would guess, at the top two. And they're both pitching against each other. Well, He's almost got a two, two strikeout per inning rate. He's in 46.2 innings. He's got 79 Ks. So and almost coming two per inning. Tonight. Coming into tonight, 517. So he's I pitching against. I know Mitch against... Keller's the top, in the top five of that list. Right, so uh, at, starting at the top, we got Spencer Strider at seventy nine. Um, I think there's some pri- a couple surprising on this list because number two, Kevin Gosman, seventy seven. Mm-hmm. He struck out ten again last night. He's he's having a resurgence after not pitching so well to start. Which who has pitched well to start? Obviously these these guys that we're talking about. Until today, Eduardo Rodriguez had. Um... You had Zach Allen, who I'm assuming is atop that list, or in the top five at least. Yep. So number three, which I'm surprised by, you don't hear, I don't feel like you've heard much about him this year, Shohei Otani. I feel like since the World Baseball Classic. If you follow on Facebook, MLB posts about him every day. Every day. (laughs) Every single day. Every, Every single day. I don't think it's out of... 
out of the ordinary. I, I think he should be posted about he's a unicorn. But uh, I knew he was in the top 10. I didn't know he was in the top five. But he pitched top was three? yesterday, two days ago. So he was yeah. third at th- well, 71 strikeouts. Then so my he's guy, maybe ahead of these next. guys. Yep, your guy, Zach. Your guy, who's your guy, Gallon or Keller? Zach Gallon. Zach Gallon is Gallen, number four sure. with 70 and 57. Um, Otani has 71 and 53, so he's got the better strikeout rate than Gallon. And Gallon's having mm-hmm. a Cy Young quality year. He's got the most mm-hmm. quality start. Oh, I take that back. Bosman has the most quality starts, and Gallon's number two with six. And then yeah. our the player of the week, pitcher of the week last week. Mm-hmm. Player of the week, player of the week, NL player of the week, Mitch Keller. Boy. What a week for Mitch Keller. He's really starting to come into his own. Like we talked about him, I think last week or the week before, how he was playing very well. He threw a complete game shutout last Monday, and then he followed it up with seven shutout innings versus the Orioles on Sunday. I watched the second half of that game because it's hard not to watch the Orioles this year. I find myself turning on two teams more than the Cubs. That Well, two other teams that aren't the Cubs that are the Orioles and the Mariners. Yeah, if I the think... Cubs aren't playing, those are the other other two teams that I've been watching a lot lately, and so I watched the Pirates game. What was insane about Mitch Keller's game on Sunday is he went seven shutout to extend his scoring uh, scoreless streak. He also struck out, I believe, ten in that game. Whatever it was, he ended. Mm-hmm. No, he struck out thirteen. He struck out thirteen in the seven innings because he ended up with twenty one strikeouts on the week. Uh, over 16 innings. He had one walk, eight hits. The most incredible part of all of this, he faced 26 batters on Saturday, on Sunday. He threw 23 balls total. That, that is, that's, I mean, that's the way to, to pitch more, you know, first pitch strikes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where, when, that's I where wish. I would go against you with the, you want strikeouts because sometimes, some pitchers just go solely for the strikeout and they rack their pitch count up too high. And that's where I would say is the one knock against Spence uh, in Atlanta is he's only throwing, I think like an average of five and a third or five and two thirds rather going deeper into the game. What's he got out of the list? 46 out of the list of top five strikeouts. He is by far the lowest of innings pitched by like eight innings or more, right? By by 10. So Gallon has 57 strider is 46. Mm-hmm. And the next close now. Gallon has one more time. start. Gallon does have one more start, so to take seven innings out makes it a little better. But forty-six um, divided by eight. Actually, is... what makes us a little bit more impressive is Strider on this list is the only one who hasn't started nine games. He's only started eight, right. and he's at the top of the leaderboard. What I think is also... impressive is Gosman has nine walks and Gallon has eight walks. Those are the only two with single-digit walks. Yeah, and definitely. another name that I wanted to toss in there, we threw a YouTube short up about him. Is Joe Ryan is having an incredible year? He was in towards the top of that list after his last start, but there's obviously been other pitchers who've pitched since then. But he's got 57 strikeouts through 50 innings with a 2.16 ERA, and he's only walked seven. So his K per walk ratio is crazy too. Yep, and that's the that's the key to pitching, right? Let, well, mm-hmm. uh, out more, less less walks, oh, less free uh, passes, less free but, passes. You know that two out walk always comes back to bite always, you, or the leadoff walk too. The leadoff walk is the worst, right? It's to start the inning with a runner on first base. Give him uh, a free speaking start. of a runner on first base, a guy who got on base a lot last week. So Mitch Keller won the NL Player of the Week, and Anthony Rizzo, former Cubby, won. AL Player of the Week for the Yankees. So Anthony Rizzo had a hell of a week. He got on base 50% of the time. He batted 444. Incredible, I think, the most out of all of this. He scored 10 runs, which led the league, by, I think, by three over the seven-day stretch. So he scored 10 runs for his team. He had a game-winning home run on Friday. He had a .6 fan, uh, fan graphs war, which was the highest in the American League. He had like a slugging, uh, an OPS of 1.315 or something along those lines. Uh, 1.315. Yeah, uh, a great week for Rizzo, uh, who is probably, I'd say, the most consistent player on that Yankees team so far this year. I think he's batting over 300. Um, Now, at some point, his back is going to start to bark. But when Rizzo (laughs) gets hot, 
when Rizzo gets hot, he stays hot, and he's he brings the Gold Glove defense. So he yeah. wins American League Player of the Week for the Yankees. It's his fourth ever Player of the Week award. It's the first one though he did with the Yankees. So it, it, I always love seeing Rizzo have success. I think that's the one guy I miss the most from that team. Yeah, from as long as his back. Ago. Yep, as long as his back is, is good. I mean, he's quietly having a fantastic year. I mean, th- those are these are MVP batting line right here. He's got he's in the top five range of home runs. If you take Pete Alonso out of fourteen, but nine home mm-hmm. runs, he's nearly got a, a batting line of three, four, five. That's what mm-hmm. you look for in average on base slugging. If you can get a guy on base four hundred percent or forty percent or more. And be slugging like for in the five hundreds. That's an MVP type line right there. Mm-hmm. As and long Rizzo as he can keep it up, about. right? Rizzo no, not talk about. Well, because in that lineup, he kind of gets lost behind when they're both healthy, Judge and Stanton. Um, and even and Gleyber even, right now is getting right. attention. Why not well, Rizzo? And, uh, DJ, DJ was the one who DJ Lemayhu was a guy who got a lot of headlines in New York for a while too. Even Harrison Bader. Uh, I feel like Bader steals more of the headlines, but For yeah, real. Uh, Anthony Rizzo. Even I mean, Luis Robert had another week. I think he'll probably win Player of the Month in the American mm-hmm. League. But n- so the Yankees are starting to get better, the Dodgers are playing better, and the Cardinals are playing better. I think what I would name this yep. episode is the Evil Empire has righted their ship in yes. the last week. I hate to see All it. Three I teams. hate to see it. Hate to see it. The Yankees are having a great week. The Dodgers, I think, have lost four games is all this this last month or the last, I don't know how many games, 20 games. They've only lost eight four and two in 16. the last 10. I know that. 16 and four, Do- I want to say, in the last 20 16 games. 16 and four. So, yeah, they're, they're getting hot. The Yankees started to play baseball uh, the way that they should be. The Cardinals are starting to play great. Um, no That's because of Goldie and, really, yeah, Arenado and Goldie yeah. are heating up. Coming into tonight, Arenado had five home runs in or five days in a row of a home run, so five games in a row. Uh, and if you just heard that, I just killed a bottle of Weller Antique. That's well, I was about was. to it's, say yeah. cheers to Rizzo and, you know, because we love him, but I have Old Elk cigar cut in my glass and yeah. I don't want to drink any more of it. <laughs> Come on. Just do it for Riz. Do it for Riz. For Rizzo. Here we go. To Rizzo. Come on. Down it, Mikey. There you go. Our cheers to Anthony Rizzo. Boy, that is whew, way different flavor. <laughs> that is a way different flavor, that Weller Antique. It's good. Uh, very it's good, good, but it's. I'm jealous it's, right now. You realize how thick and how intense the old elk is when you go down to a Weller antique because it makes the Weller antique kind of just seem. All so right. should I not pour that? Yeah, I mean, you probably will like it, but <laughs> hey, go for it, go for it. Uh, but the Yankees, so Rizzo playing for the Yankees. This Yankees Toronto series, which is going on right now has probably been the one to watch the last couple of days. A lot of controversy going on in that series. Uh, and the Yankees and the Blue Jays, as we speak, are tied in a pretty good game right now as Chris Bassett's on the mound. And Chris Bassett, I want to throw something out there real quick. You saw it on YouTube already, if you follow us there. But Bassett threw a complete game shutout last week. He did it against the Braves, didn't he? He did do it against the Braves. And, and um, it was against Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider gave up one run. And got the L. 12 K's in six innings, and he got the freaking L. I'm upset about that because he's on my fantasy team. Well, last week when we were talking, Mitch Keller had won, uh, who had got the complete game shutout for the Pirates for the first time since 2018. Bassett's was the first one for the Blue Jays since 2015 by Mark Burley, who I forgot was a Blue Jay, uh, all in all. But uh, that was how long ago it had been since someone on the Blue Jays had done it. Uh, so that was impressive, but he's there's pitching only tonight. Been, and I, there's, there's only been 10 complete games this year, which is to me, you, everyone loves it when a pitcher goes to length. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's higher than it was last year at this point, though. Yeah. That, that's I, just I probably agree. a little, a little, because uh, Evaldi's done it, um, as well as Alcantara, Bassett, um, a lot of, a lot, I feel like there's been more complete games uh, regarding pitchers going deeper i think because they're probably throwing less pitches because of the pitch clock to be honest that'd be my guess uh because they're kind of getting rushed to throw the ball but there's outs being 
more uh they're getting more outs quicker. Tonight's like ace night, man. I'm just looking. It's Ivaldi um, versus Strider and Garrett Cole versus Bassett over in Toronto. So, like, some of the better pitchers are pitching tonight. I just realized. Yeah, the ten- the t- between Toronto and New York, the tension is high as um, Toronto, b- bro- Toronto broadcasters, I want to say the broadcasters are the one who have instigated this the most, um, have accused... Well, accused, and also it's also happened two different instances. The bro- Blue Jays broadcasters have accused Judge of cheating uh, right before his second home run of the game. I think on Monday night, mm-hmm. he was seen his eyes shifted into the Yankees dugout right before the pitch that he hit a home run. So, have you heard the reasoning behind that? No, but I, that's all I've heard. And I actually believe oh, the oh, reason. Judge, oh, what Judge said? I did. Yeah, I heard what the, Judge said. The first base coach supposedly found that the pitcher was tipping his pitches, and he was able to find it at first base. So Judge was looking down at first base, which in my mind, completely legal. If you right. can find the tell of a pitch, of a pitch, if a pitcher's tipping his pitches, that's one thing. If you're trying to steal signs with like what the Astros did, or I believe the Red Sox did it as well. If you're doing Using that. Using non, non-in-game thing. Like if you're the runner on second base and you're getting the catcher and you're, you're hey, that's that's part of the game, baby. You're, you know, putting that is hand part on of the, the head. But if you're using video and you're using electronics, mm-hmm. get out of here. So that's, that's what I think it actually was because I remember my first base coach in my little league and my travel ball being like this guy, he – Wiggles his right arm weird when he's about to throw a curveball. So who knows? And you might only be able to see that from the first base side or from the third base coach box. So that's Judge just trying to get a tip. Okay. And if it works, it works, right? And first base and coaches and third base coaches are part of the game. They're they're mm-hmm. supposed to be there. They're there's a chalk line or paint line for the coaches. Um one could <laughs> argue one could argue that they're not a player. They're just a coach that's getting a different angle, but I don't like that. Ju- if that's if that's the truth, come out and ju- you come out and say, "Hey, he was tipping his pitches." It's that simple. But Judge instead said, "Oh, the Yankees dugout was getting rowdy when we're up five to zero, six to zero, six to one, or something," and they're arguing. They're they're getting rowdy about strikes, and I didn't like that that we were up already. Like, oh, I didn't hear that one. Yeah, that's what that's what Judge said. Judge huh. said his dugout was getting rowdy about strike calls, and he didn't like that they were getting rowdy because they were winning by so much. So just let it go. That's Judge. That's Judge's comment. Well, if that's what he said, I'm not a fan of that. I do think that he was. I I do think the pitcher was tipping pitches. Uh, that would be my guess. I don't remember who it was, but I know John Schneider got into it with the third base coach with the Yankees yesterday for not being in the third base coach's box, and he told him, shut up, fat boy, to somebody. Um, <laughs> did you see that video at all? <laughs> no. The, the only video I've seen, it was an edit, but it was um, who was the center fielder for the Yankees for a long time? Not Aaron Hicks, but Brett Gardner. Per- there's a video of mm. Brett Gardner slamming the top of the Yankees dugout with something. With a bat. Yeah, with a bat. Yeah. He's taking it. And it's cut where it's Judge like zoomed in looking and then Judge looking over towards the dugout. And then there's Brett Gardner. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and then Judge hitting a home run. <laughs> wow. But that's, that's, that's pushing it far like towards the Astros type of deal. Yes, very, very. Um, but then <laughs> but last night, that boy. Domingo Herman got ejected. For cheating. For actually cheating. For cheating. And he was called out a couple weeks ago by the same umpire crew for the same thing. Mm. And they, um, the umpire said that this was the stickiest hand he's ever seen. And did you see the Blue, Blue Jays broadcasters? They zoomed in and he put his hand on his hip and then he moved his hand and there was just a bunch of gunk on his jersey. Oh, I saw that. That's not good. No, especially, here's my thing. A couple weeks ago, they already pulled you aside. They already told you, hey, something's the same wrong. Crew. They, ch- they checked him twice, I believe, in that game, and they told him to wash his hands. And then again last night. So That's like I mean, when Serger think... got caught. He obviously came out clean-handed because his spin rates were so down. 
but you knew he was he had just been caught so yeah. he knew he was gonna have lots of eyes on him Herman, mm-hmm. you just gotta be smarter man if you're gonna yeah i'm not telling you that you know to be doing you know hey do it if you can get away with it just be smart right man. Mm-hmm. so speaking of umps did you see the ump show this weekend Oh, you know I love a good ump show. It pisses me off. But did you see what happened oh, in Arizona? No, I I did see what you're talking about. Go ahead. I did see it. So absolute ump show, ridiculous. So I don't know who's batting for the Diamondbacks, but he check swung, and the first base umpire said he didn't swing. So Christian Walker, first baseman for the Diamondbacks, very underrated player by the way, uh, doesn't get enough due. So here's your due, Christian Walker. He's sitting there clapping in the dugout like, yeah, good call. And then the ump threw him out of the game. He was stunned. For just cheering. He was stunned. Like, what was like, what, what was in the ump's mind? What was in the ump's mind there? Like, for clapping what was was he? What was what did he think he was chirping about? If he was like, "Hey, yeah, good job," or I'm flabbergasted. Yeah. I think everybody is. And speaking of flabbergasted, what the f- is in your hand? Are you doing like hand strengthening exercises over here? <laughs> I was sitting here on my desk, so yeah, I'm doing. <laughs> For my forearm for baseball, you know. You're trying to get his forearm. There's other ways to get your forearm strengthened, Michael. Let's not talk about that other ways, Brandon. You know, I know I go to the gym. Wrist curls. Wrist Wrist curls. curls. Yeah, yeah. You can stretch it, you know. This came with a new set of bands I got this year. My first new set since seventh grade. So Michael's multitasking here. He's doing bourbon and baseball podcasts along with the the hand. I'm not doing a lot of bourbon, though. I'm not doing a lot of bourbon. No. No, well, you just put up new shelves. I noticed that as well. Cool I shelves there. I did. I did. I got my shelves finished. I'll have to post a picture. Um, it's bourbon and baseball. That's exactly what my shelves are. Um, I'm, and I'm, Ronnie I'm, Acuna just went yard again. Oh my gosh! What number is that so, for that guy? Uh, I think that's number ten. I think. Uh, but he did it off of Nathan Navaldi, who had coming into this game twenty eight. 28 consecutive innings without giving up a run, and the Braves have scored three off of them. That series is a good one. The yes. Braves versus the Rangers right now. Two That's powerhouse offenses. Mm-hmm. And two great pitching staffs this year so far, to be honest. I mean, the Rangers pitching staff, even without Grink, oh, not Grinky, without uh, DeGrom, <laughs> has, I mean, John Gray's been pitching great. Uh, John Gray, Valdi, yeah, is one of the best pitchers in the league. So that's Ain't a pop, that's, out of nowhere for them. Mm, that Braves and Rangers right now could be a preview of the World Series. We talked about that with the Braves and the Orioles last weekend. Um, so that's another fun matchup. And th- this is something we weren't we wouldn't get every year, right? Yeah. Teams playing every team. Did, now, did you league. see the sad news for the Rangers? Is not really to their major league team, but Kumar Rocker has yeah. to get Tommy John. He had to figure it was coming sooner or later, right? It does for it every It seems like every, every player, every pitcher has Tommy John at some point. You just hope to career. only have it once now. Right. And that's that's how it is nowadays for sure. But, yeah, he is going on the DL. Or the DL. There's another kangaroo court. There's another dollar. So Brandon owes $3 to the uh, the old the bourbon jar. But uh, he, he uh, he's going to be out for – I bet you they hold him out through the end of next year. He probably Kumar? pitches a couple games towards the end of next year in the minors, but by the time he has the surgery now, rehab, it's a 12-month deal before you're throwing, I think. Uh, yeah, it's usually a 12, 12 to 18-month ordeal. Yeah, so I, for them, he's young. Let him, You know he's going to be up soon anyways, so I would just yeah. hold him out even through next year. But back to the ump show real quick. You notice that Angel Hernandez has not been talked about at all this year? That's because he hasn't been calling games for some reason. He's only umped one game. The last <laughs> one was April 3rd. Oh, my gosh. April 3rd. Yeah, so I, the Umpires Association and Major League Baseball, they're probably like, yep. Um, the the union, they're like, yeah, uh, let's let's not have him on the field. Like, yeah, a no-go to this guy. Like, so is uh, he in the replay about- room effing up replays? I have no idea. I've, yeah, he might be. He might be doing forearm exercises for all I care. I don't know, but my elbow's hurting all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, is it? Yeah, well, <laughs> I need some Tommy John over here. Oh. Michael overdid the uh, the old forearm uh, strengthening. 
<laughs> Speaking of pitchers who are coming back, not necessarily from injury, but I uh, want to give a big shout out to Liam Hendricks. He beat cancer. He's coming back. He'll be up with the White Sox here ding, shortly, ding, I believe. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so awesome for that. I know that it happened a couple of weeks ago. We're a little late to the party, but I knew that we needed to say something. So here's another cheers to another player, Liam don't, Hendricks. Don't make me, don't make me do it. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm going to drink to Liam. A guy just beat cancer. Come on, Michael. Look, I even put it, I poured it into my mini Glen. And your mini Glen. You put down on the list Walker Bueller thrown off a mound. That's good news. It's, he, he was not supposed to come back till September, but now that he's already throwing off a mound, I think he might he could be uh, productive in August for them. Um, even if he came back as a reliever, mm-hmm. if he came back as a reliever, that'd be fantastic for the Dodgers. Um, well, but the other problem with the Dodgers is Dustin May, who just had Tommy John in his back this year, just went down with an elbow injury. Um, I don't know exactly. If they just said he was going to the DL. That's another one, Brandon. That's two bucks. So for those of you new to this, um, if we say disabled list, because that's what it used to be called, or the Indians, which is what the Cleveland Guardians used to be called, that is a fine of $1, uh, which will go to a a bourbon jar. And once we get enough money, we'll buy another bottle of bourbon to review on the podcast. So Brandon owes now $2 from this podcast. But yeah, Dustin May got hurt today. Who were they playing? Was it the Nationals? Uh, Minnesota, I think. Min- oh, that's right, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, they're saying a flexor pronator strain. Uh, yeah, so hopefully in an effort to avoid surgery, they're going to give him an injection. Mm. Yeah, he's out at least one month, which is not good. And that Dodgers team, as we mentioned, are really starting to turn around. James Outman hit a grand slam today. Uh, oh, my they're gosh. They're playing very that good guy. baseball. Where did that guy come uh, from? Uh, they're, they're minor league system, man. Speaking of the Dodgers, former Dodger, and we were talking about Texas, Corey Seager is back tonight uh, after coming back um, from a hamstring injury. He got activated. I think he said he's DHing tonight. He is DHing. He's hitting second and DHing for the Texas Rangers. Uh, And he was on a tear before he got hurt. I know he was batting something like uh, 350 or something when he got hurt. 359 through 11 games is all. So that means he got hit today if he's up to 359. No, he is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Oh, well, then I, I – okay. So he was 359 probably coming into the game tonight. That's where my head was at. Because yes. I know currently when I looked at it, he was batting 350. So Yes, 359 coming into tonight. And now tonight he is 0 for 3 with a strikeout as Texas is leading Atlanta in the bottom of the six, four 4-3. Yeah, Jesse Chavez coming in after Acuna cut the lead in half. It was four to two. So the solo that shot guy. by Ronnie. That he's got a chance. He has a got a chance not only to win MVP, but also have a forty forty season, which I don't remember oh. the last time that's been done. The dude has seventeen stolen bases already. That's 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 mm-hmm. a given. I think right there. The other day he was on pace for thirty seven home runs and sixty nine stolen bases. So he would fall just 69. short of the forty home runs, but I think he would. I think he'd be able to get to the 40 home run mark. But, man, uh, Seager back. That lineup, that's the last thing the American League wants to see is Seager back in that lineup. They're scoring the, the second the Texas, most runs in baseball. Yeah, Texas's offense is one of the, is the best probably in baseball. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and between them and the Rays right now, because the Rays continue to score like six, seven runs per game, but their bullpen's blowing it right now. Yeah. Yeah, but um, the Rangers are scoring runs. That they just added a uh, rookie of the year to their lineup as Seager was when he came up. But he he's been MVP candidate every year that he's been healthy, right? Like towards the top. Corey Seager. Stop. Oh yeah, he's got the potential when healthy. He's just never fully been healthy, right? Right. Twenty twenty three oh seven three fifty eight. He's always. He's consistent. He's always batting around 300, on base percentage around 350, and usually slugging close to 500. Yeah. And he what was else an can you ask for a shortstop? 2016, 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he's playing a premium position. He was an all star last year in Texas. Uh, and he had a rough year last year, to be honest. He batted 245. That's his worst year of his career last year, and he got an all star. <laughs> 
Well, uh, moving on um, from Corey Seager over to another battered middle infielder who is on the Houston Astros. So much excitement. The excitement. Yes. Houston Astros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's been in double a for the last couple of days, I believe. Um, and now he is actually probably returning to the lineup. My guess is Friday. Dusty said that they pulled him out of his rehab assignment today to come play with the team for batting practice. And depending on how that goes, he may be re, um, reevaluated, but, uh, most likely probably in the lineup on Friday would be my guess. Right. And that would be a great time to try to get back in the loop of things because that's when they are starting or, I don't know if they're starting, but they could be playing on Thursday. But they're playing Oakland on Friday. (laughs) So a great time to get some good reps, to get some good confidence building. Well, we were talking about the evil empire a little bit earlier with the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Cardinals. We can throw the Astros into that because they're starting to get hot as well. Um, I mean, they played the White Sox this past weekend. But uh, really. taken two of three so far. Two, two, Two of two from the Cubs. Yeah, more likely to be two or three the way the score looks right now, but we're not going to jump the shark on that one just yet. But they're <laughs> playing better baseball. Um, so overall, just uh, the evil empire is starting to make a comeback here, Michael. All mm. four teams. Mm. Don't, mm. don't like it. Don't like it. I was happier when the Pittsburgh Pirates were out of nowhere. Not that I believe mm-hmm. truly in them to continue doing it, but I was happier when – Pittsburgh was in first, and St. Louis was in last, which one of those is still true. Not for long, yep. but... Well, Pittsburgh won today, so that helps. And Pittsburgh has won only three. So have the Cubs. But we're not going to talk about that. And Mitch Keller's won two of those three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's true. Yep. They had only won two out of ten games, and Mitch Keller was the one who got the win in both of those. Uh, oh, no. And then another injury that you put down, Kyle Wright, 60 days uh, day, this, to the injured list. I almost said it. I almost said it again, but I didn't. Yeah, that's a bummer for the Kyle Wright had his breakout year last year. Braves would have been four-man deep with Bryce Elder breaking out this year. Um, mm-hmm. So the Braves really are only down to three reliable pitchers in Strider, Elder, and Charlie Morton. Um, is got, Freed hurt still? Freed is hurt, and he could be out through July. So, but they always seem to be pulling up pitchers. Them, the Guardians, so and what, the Rays. one guy I want to mention. Just so there's Elder. Um, it's not there's Elder. There's Schuster, who has not been doing well. There's Dylan Dodd, who has also not been doing as well. There is a guy they just promoted to Triple A. He's he started the year in High A this year. Oh wow! And he's in Triple A. Got AAA? promoted. Got promoted, made two starts in Double A, and got promoted. And I think in 19 innings he has 31 strikeouts with like no runs What's given his up. Name? AJ Smith Dash Sauver. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna rely on your pronunciation, Michael. <laughs> Shaver. It's S A S H A W V E R. Shaver. Yeah. Smith Shaver. Oh, that is a. Smith Shaw. 20 year old high school Texas QB started in high A, has a perfect zero ERA, 0.86 <laughs> whip through 21 innings. In double A or all, all together for the year? But to, but, uh, in high A and then two starts in double A. <laughs> Woof. Is That's, already yeah, been promoted the, to triple A. But you know, the Braves those, those just Texas keep it. sports. Yeah, the Braves just pump them. Strider came straight from out of nowhere. He was not mm-hmm. a name that everyone was like, watch out for Spencer Strider. Yeah, last year, Rookie of the Year, right? Was Strider Rookie of the Year? I thought he got NL Rookie of the Year. I could be wrong. No, Michael Harris won Rookie of the Year. So he had he was runner-up, I think. Another guy that came out of nowhere. Another brave. Uh, and then Anthony Rendon, hurt again. Are we surprised? Are we surprised? I, I, I don't know how they're still running that guy. Or... I guess they're not really counting on him since they they have Gio Urshela and Brandon Jury who can fill in at third mm-hmm. base this year. Um, but you're paying so, him so much money. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, but now when still when they lose it will be without Rendon and Shout and Otani yeah. will go each hit a home run, they'll still lose. So Yeah. Nothing changed. Well they have been playing different. pretty well until the last couple of days. But 
they look better this year than they have in years past, but also it's still. Early. I had the Angels, I think, in my in my power rankings. Um, you do last week in, in the well, top ten last week. Last week. Well, that's a great segue to get into this week's top 10 power rankings, uh, which is brought to you by no one. But if you'd like to sponsor our power rankings, whether that is Comcast or Comet or someone who brings power, Thor, if you're out there and you want to sponsor our power rankings because it's powerful, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, Maybe it's one of our new, new subscribers, Thomas Powers. Yeah, Thomas Powers. You would like to subscribe or uh, we already did subscribe if you would like to sponsor us we would love it i mean anybody i mean if if you've got a company and you want to sponsor barrels and barrels of bourbon and baseball podcast Brandon, love don't it, but so love... desperate i'm not desperate i'm just i'm just saying we would love some sponsorship you're just, you're just uh, pushing it let's go yeah I yeah i'm it. just Intense. it doesn't happen if you if you don't push it if you don't push it it doesn't happen but regarding oh, our power rankings <laughs> We are jumping. I'm assuming we both have the same number one team as we have all four weeks that we've done power rankings. Number one team has not changed over the last four weeks that we've done this. Um, I would assume if we started at the beginning of the year, it would have been the same thing as the Rays were undefeated for how long. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a brand new number two, though. It's always been the same one, two for me. Um, I think same same for you. And I've got a different number two as well. Okay, so uh, my number two is the hottest team over the last 20 games, the Los Angeles Dodgers, 16-4 and And, in the last 20 games. And that is mine as well. They've scored the fourth most runs in Major League Baseball, the most in the National League. They're 8-2 and over the last 10, as you mentioned. They're 16-4 and in their last 20. They're the Dodgers of old in the last couple of weeks. They are looking like the best team in the National League after the Braves have stumbled the last couple of games. Uh, We're both in lockstep there. Who do you have three? Number three is my former number two, Atlanta. Um, uh, they're, they put a beating on Texas on Monday night, um, which is a great offense. They shut them down 10-0. to zero. Pretty sure was it 10-0? Mm-hmm. to zero? thought it was 12-0. to uh, zero. Was it 12-0? Mm-hmm. So um, Atlanta's still a freaking powerhouse of an offense. Three great starting pitchers. They don't have a fourth and fifth. Um, so I couldn't bump them down too much further than – uh, how about you, Brandon? Number three. I went with the second best record in baseball, the Baltimore Orioles, uh, okay. who were last week fourth. I had the Dodgers jump to second. The Orioles jump to third. I mean, the second best record in baseball, second best in their division. It's hard to be at the top of their division when the Rays got out too. It's hard to They're catching them. They're catching them. They now, Baltimore didn't have as good of a week, but there's five and five in their last 10. But still, when you're second best in Major League Baseball record-wise, kind of hard not to be in the top three, in my mind. Right, right. Well, and, right, but... <laughs> yeah, and, and then fourth, I have the Texas Rangers, who have the second most runs in baseball. What I find is impressive is they're 12 and eight versus teams of 500 or better, which right. is one of the better marks um, the Rays, remember when we were talking about the Rays a couple of weeks ago, we were like, they haven't played anybody. They've played 23 games against teams with 500 or better, and they're 14 and nine. So, so there was no fluke, no fluke, no fluke. So there's, I mean, they've got most of their losses against teams with 500 or better record, but still 14 wins out of 23. That's better than 500 versus teams who are above 500. And that's yep. why the Rays continue to stay towards the top. I go Texas with my number four, as I mentioned, second most runs in baseball. Hard to yeah. beat them right now. I agree with you. Texas, I got number four. I mean, that offense is scary. They put up a lot of runs. They did against the Braves even. Mm-hmm. And they put, they won seven to four yesterday, I think, versus the Braves. So they went right. one and one in the first two games, and the Braves are my fifth team. I did have them drop three uh, they've had a rough couple of games. I think they are five and five in their last ten, or four and six in their last ten coming into tonight. So they didn't have as great of a, a week. They're they're actually not that great against teams with a winning record. I think they're ten and ten or nine and ten with a team 10 and 10. above ten and ten. Now their run differential is the best in the National League, but also by only playing 20 games so far this year versus teams above 500, you would say that they've beaten up on the the lower end teams. So that's where you start to get your higher run differential. And just that four and six, that was the worst out of my top five. Uh, they fell three positions. They're still... You know what's interesting winning. I just thought of, though? 
that re- that above 500 record changes. So like the Dodgers lost to the Cubs earlier in a lot early in the year. It was as the team was above 500 though. Okay. Okay. So that yeah. record doesn't change based on how their opponent that they right. lost to were one. Okay. Right. Yeah. So at the, the Dodgers time of are playing eight and nine. Team, yeah, the Dodgers games. are eight and nine. Uh, because a lot of their games came against the Padres, who was their rival, though. So, like, I kind of weigh those games differently. They just swept the Padres this past weekend, too, and took two or three the weekend before. Yeah. So that is my fifth team. I'm assuming we have the same top five, if I had to guess. We do have the same top five. Order. I got Baltimore at five. Um, I, I couldn't push Atlanta and Texas because of those those offenses out of um, out of any any lower but Baltimore's yeah, right there, like you said. The record record is there. The kids are playing Adley. Um, mm-hmm. um, I forget. Ryan Mountcastle's having a great year. Cedric Mullins is having a great year again. And uh, Henderson needs to pick it up. But hasn't he been playing a little bit better as a light gunner? Didn't Gunner he Henderson finally the other day? has. Yes, yeah. finally. Um, so that's a young team to watch. I mean, they haven't played as well over the last week, but they're still the best, second best record in baseball. They're fun too. Did you see Cedric Mullins had a uh, home run in the eighth inning for the cycle the other night? But did you see what they've implemented at Camden Yard when someone hits a home run? No. What do they do? They they call it the splash zone, and someone stands outside of the section. You have to buy tickets for the section. This is called the splash zone. It's like Sea World. They spray the hell out of you with, I believe, champagne. Or some oh, wow. sort of like, yeah, they just spray you down. It's pretty funny. And when I he you hit though, water, but they get fancy. I think it's champagne. I could be wrong. I saw it on social media, but yeah. he hit the home run to complete the cycle, and they went nuts because it was the bottom of the eighth. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, it was. It was pretty cool. So my sixth team is the same team as last week. They were six and four. They're playing the Braves right now. They're one and one this week versus them. But the Blue Jays, fifteen and twelve versus teams above five hundred. That I mean, every team in their division is above five hundred. So every game they've played against their division has been against a team above five hundred, most likely. But they have a great offense. They're still scoring runs. Uh, Bassett had a great game last week. Hard to keep them out of the top six for me. Um, so I differ from you there. And I have them at 10 as they got destroyed by Atlanta. Do I have that as by Atlanta? No. They took two of three from Atlanta. Um, They're playing. But I, I right have. Now. I, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. No, You're the Blue right. Jays. Texas the Blue Jays. Yep. Blue Jays. Um, I, have, I have the Blue Jays down at 10. It's not a knock against them. I just like other teams better. You like other that, teams better? I like well, other where did teams you have, better. So I'm going to get on you because last week you got on me for giving them higher than the Red Sox. Where did you have Toronto last week? Toronto, I didn't have in my top 10. You didn't have them in your top 10 last week? Mm-mm. You didn't even have them in your top 16 looking at your list now. Yeah, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at that. Something was off there. I don't think I finished that completely because Detroit was listed as 14. Um, I don't think I finished my power, my complete power rankings last week. You didn't even Something do it for wrong. week two either. No, I did the top <laughs> so 10. You didn't week one, Toronto. I was so stoked. So that's where I should yell at you last week is why didn't you have the Blue Jays in the top 10? I don't know. That was a week ago. Let's, let's talk about why I have them. You know who, okay, so who you I have, have in front of them. Jumping into the top ten, at I have them now. jumping. So who, into do you, the top who do you 10. have in six then? In six is Minnesota. Okay. Minnesota came in, torched the Cubs. Um, mm-hmm. Had their offense. They just Joey Gallo hit bombs. Ter- Trevor <sighs> Land. Joey Gallo didn't just hit a bomb. Joey Gallo broke Statcast. Broke <laughs> Statcast. You didn't see that the home no. run he hit off of Hayden. There was no exit velocity and there was no distance because Statcast broke because he hit it so hard and he hit it so far. That ball's still flying. I just saw it go oh over Kentucky gosh. as it started to orbit the Earth again. But yeah, that the twins to, out. that hit the scoreboard in right field. It hit the scoreboard. That's like the fourth deck. Yeah, and that was the best you know freeze frame of Hayden frozen. Like, oh my gosh! He, you could hear him say. He screamed right after it. You did. You do uh, hear him. Yeah. So you have Minnesota at six. I have Minnesota six. Uh, Alex Kirloff is finally going off for him. Um, 
Correa is coming Hayden. around. <laughs> yeah, Correa is coming around. Get healthy Pablo Lopez is, is is turning out great trade for them. Um, giving up Arias. So I have the move. Twins in seventh. Okay. So one spot lower than you. Uh, they have the second best ERA in baseball. They've given up the third least amount of runs in baseball. Their I mean, pitching Pablo staff Pablo Lopez, is... Joe Ryan, Sonny Gray. Three aces right there. You, yeah, Joe Ryan. Argue, three aces. Do you know who they got Joe Ryan for and from? No, who is that? They traded. <laughs> somehow they fleeced the Tampa Bay Rays. They traded Nelson Cruz, who had two months left on his contract to Tampa a couple of years ago, and they got Joe Ryan, who is now the ace of that rotation, if it wasn't for Sonny Gray. Right. But, yeah, their pitching staff has been great. Their offense is coming around. Joey Gallo, he's – He's got one of the funniest lines. He was hitting under 200, but he had an OPS above 850 because he's either hitting home runs or getting out. But that team, I called it at the beginning of the year when I said that I thought they were going to win that Central Division. They're the class of that division by a long shot. There's no other team within shouting distance, and I don't even think I have any other team. The Tigers are 16th in my rankings. Tigers playing good baseball lately. They are, and they've been but they're still under 500. Yeah, because they started out atrocious. They started out so atrocious. So my pick for seven is the Minnesota Twins. I've got the Houston Astros playing um, good baseball of late, like we've talked about earlier on the podcast. They've won three in a row. They're about to get probably one of the leaders back, Jose Altuve. Kyle Tucker's playing mm-hmm. good. Jordan Alvarez is hitting freaking bombs like he does. And I won't go any further into the Houston Astros, but I'll get into my number eight, which is the New York Yankees. Mm-hmm. Coming around, like and we both about again the evil empire, and we both have the same number eight because I went with the New York Yankees as well with my eight. They're seven and three in their last ten. They've been playing great baseball. They're scoring runs. They beat up on the uh, Tampa Bay pitching staff this weekend. Uh, they had a great start to the week versus Toronto. The last couple of games, they're playing better baseball. They are better than the Red Sox have been in the last week or so. They kind of replaced the Red Sox in my top 10 from last week, and the Red Sox are the biggest yep. droppers in my – the Red Sox and the Cubs both dropped the most in my uh, in my power rankings. But, yeah, Yankees are eight for me at seven and three in their last 10. And uh, I right think behind we have them. the same nine. We have the same nine. Arizona? Yep, Arizona. They actually dropped in my book by a ranking. They were eighth last week. They're down to nine. They were only five and five. But they score a lot of runs. They're fifth in the league in scoring. If they could find starting pitching besides Gallon, I mean, mm-hmm. can you list their pitchers besides Gallon and Brandon Fat? Uh, Ryan Nelson, I think, is the other guy. Uh, and the other two, yeah. I have no clue. Right. And the uh, only reason I know Ryan Nelson is because I was like, who the hell is this guy? And I had to look him up. They had the DFA, Madison Bumgarner. Mm-hmm. Luke Weaver. Yeah, that's who started the other day, I think. Yeah. Not not sure what's going on. That's their one area of depth, and their bullpen's not great. But they've been fun. They're scoring runs. Uh, they contis- continue to seem to just find a way to win, which is what Merrill you're looking Kelly. for. Merrill Kelly. Merrill Kelly. Kelly. That's another one. That's another one. Uh, he's a good three. And he's having a decent year. I'd say he's the best, yeah. second best pitcher uh, on that team outside of Gallon right now. And if Fott can figure it out, uh, which I think he did last night, I think he gave up what one run in five innings last night as he started to rebound. So that'll be an interesting thing to watch for the Diamondbacks. Their rotation is probably the biggest question mark. Boy, what a series for! Uh, I think his name's Donovan Fletcher. Is yeah, it Donovan? Right? Oh, mm-hmm. oh, Dominic he gets called up. Dominic. 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 Yes, Donovic. Uh, Dominic. Dominic Fletcher. Dominic Fletcher. Yes. Very strong start. He tied the franchise record for RBIs in a season uh, in a series, excuse me, with uh, eleven in the first three games of that series. He didn't get one on Sunday, but have a have a call up, right? Get called up and then just drive in eleven. Yeah, in fantasy wise, they say it's almost a no brainer to recommend him mm-hmm. because the Diamondbacks have the second best hitting matchup this week, so. Well, they played the or uh, the Oakland Athletics to start the week, and who they play this weekend? They then play Pittsburgh this weekend. 
Oh, well, there you go. And their pitching staff has not been great, even though Dick Mountain got a, a big win today. They do have to face Mitch Keller, so two of three. That's so funny. Dick Mountain. <laughs> yeah, Rich Hill, Dick Mountain. Best nickname Dick in sports. Well, there was something, the oldest matchup between Rich Hill it, it, and Miguel Cabrera. And Did you see yeah. them run to first base together? It was the funniest <laughs> thing in the world. It was the the slowest sprint because – uh, there, Miggy hit a ball to first base that took the first baseman into the hole. So Rich Hill had to cover first base, and he realized it, and they both sprinted. It's the funniest thing. Go look it up on social media. It was like the slowest sprint. It was 83 years old combined between the two in that sprint. Boy. And then my 10th team, um, they have one of the better records in the league, believe it or not. I think it was like top seven is the Milwaukee Brewers. They're playing better ball as of late. They've really taken control of the NL Central over the last couple of days. They're 6-4 and four in their last 10. My one issue with them is they don't score much, and they, they've they got a good pitching set, but the run differential is a plus four, yeah, which is that's, not good. Yeah, um, I think that run differential is a good power, especially early in the year. We'll see how the Rays got so high so quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just not going to give a lot to the, I'm not going to give anything unnecessarily to the Brewers. They've got the six best record in baseball. That's why I figured you ha- if you're in the six best record and you're leading your division, even though their expected winning record is supposed to be 21 and 21 by the Pythagorean theorem, uh, or the, Pyth- I think that's what's called. What's it called? The, there's a theorem when it takes the, uh, the run differential, it's escaping my mind. But when you've got the six best record, I'm putting you in in uh, the top 10. So that's my 10. And they're doing that without a great Corbin Burns and a, and a great Brandon Woodruff. Right. Who's your 10th team? Oh, you already said the Toronto Blue Jays. So to list it off, Brandon, one is Tampa Bay. Two is the Dodgers. Three, the Orioles. Then goes the Rangers, Braves, Toronto Blue Jays, Minnesota Twins, New York Yankees, Arizona Diamondbacks, and the Milwaukee Brewers. Just outside of my top 10, I had Houston and Seattle 11 and 12. And Boston, the biggest falling team, down to 13 for me after a very rough week. Yeah, I've got the Rays, Dodgers, Atlanta, Texas, Baltimore in the top five. And then the bottom five, bottom six through ten is Minnesota, Houston, Yankees, Diamondbacks, and Toronto. So that is our top ten. So if you have a gripe with it, message us. We'd love to hear it. We'd love to. We'd love to. We'd love give to our talk about back it. and forth. We'd love to talk about it. Um, so thank you for that. For those of you who've chimed in on our Facebook posts and all of that, I want to give a shout out to Poor Man's Pores. They give us a shout out on their podcast. It's our guy, Jerry, um, a whiskey kid in his peppers. He's been a big supporter of us from the beginning. He's got his own podcast out as well with a couple of buddies. So poor man pours. Go check them out. I think they're on all. You you listened to the episode. I didn't get a chance to get around to yeah, it. Yeah, I listened what, to it. What do you think? Yeah, it was, it was um, Jerry told us, it was his turn to t- tell the drunk story. Um, so if you're, if you're looking for a good laugh, uh, listen in and then they talk about they get into rum a little bit and talk about Captain Morgan and some other Jerry's some other drinks guy. and um, Jerry's a big rum guy. Some and you hear more about different. He talked about more about different rums and which one they were like. Oh, I got to get another one. I got another bottle of that. So, uh, yeah, uh, good good entertainment. Listen, well, go go check them out. Poor man pours. One last thing I wanted to do. We did it a couple of weeks ago. We've kind of forgotten to do it the last couple of weeks. Talking about the best series of the weekend. Um, I would circle three separate series to take a look at. That uh, Braves versus Mariners matchup in Atlanta, it'll be a good one. The Dodgers travel to St. Louis, two of the hottest teams in the National League right now. Yep. And then also uh, the battle of the AL East second place teams, basically. It's Baltimore heading to Toronto to take on the Blue Jays, which will be a fun one. Uh, Manoa will be starting in that series on Saturday. And I think on uh, on Friday, you're going to have a pretty good matchup as well. Yeah. Gibson and Kikuchi. Uh, you've got Bryson Miller, who's had an incredible start to his career. Uh, you hope to see it continue. No injuries. Yeah. Yeah. One earned run. That's a listen to this matchup Friday. Miller versus Elder in that uh, Mariners versus Braves pitching matchup. So, a very good game there. So, go check. Th- that would be my game of the weekend right there. That pitching matchup, two young players in the top 10 in ERA in the league, two starting off really great. That would be now a the game. Gonna fin- the game's going to finish 8-7 oh. to seven now. 
and no one's going to see it because it's on Apple TV Plus. Come oh, on. I was, so, I was so mad. I pulled up MLB TV to watch the Cubs the other day, and it said blacked out. I was like, why, how would the Cubs be blacked out for me? And Apple it was, TV. Apple hmm. TV. So that's I, I get it free, it. at least. Get my phone. Apple TV Plus. Hmm. So I hate uh, all that this. Is... Game on Peacock. Game on YouTube. Game oh, on this. Peacock thing. Just let me play it and watch my damn game. Uh, the Yankees and the Reds play this weekend here in Cincinnati, and they play the Peacock game on Sunday. Uh, Sunday is at 11. The Red Sox are in start. town for you? The Yankees. Oh, the Yankees are in town. You make it yeah. out, You able to make it out for one? I doubt it. I doubt it. I'd love to, but I doubt it. It's it's the only time Great American Ballpark sells out. So <laughs> Hard to get tickets. Hard to get tickets for one series in one game of the year, and that is the opening game. Uh, yeah, and I guess Sunday baseball in uh, St. Louis, Kershaw versus Flaherty should be a good game now that Flaherty's starting to pitch back. Even Bieber versus Verlander on Sunday will be a good one for Sunday night Bieber, baseball. Bieber got lit up earlier this week, though, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, but before that, he'd been pitching. I feel like every pitcher who had been pitching well as of late got lit up in the last three days. Uh-huh. Eduardo Rodriguez, Justin Steele, uh, another one got knocked down the peg a couple days ago as well. They all seem to be dropping like flies. Uh, Sunday so. night baseball is Guardians versus Mets in New York. Mm-hmm. They call the Sunday night baseball at six o'clock, which isn't terrible, but six ten. The- six ten Central, seven ten Eastern on ESPN. Uh, no free yet. But that has been another episode of Barrels and Barrels. Sorry, go ahead. Back and that has been another you. There's the background music from Mikey. That has been another episode of Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. Uh, thank you for listening to this hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes of bourbon and baseball uh, and some fun. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Instagram, you can follow us there, Barrels and Barrels Pod. Also, Facebook, Barrels and Barrels Pod, and Twitter, Barrels and Barrels. Don't forget to sub- subscribe to us on YouTube. That is Barrels and Barrels Pod. We're putting out a lot of extra content there. So if you missed it, you're missing a lot of cool stuff. Go check us out there. Email us, as Michael mentioned early on in the episode, barrelsandbarrels at gmail.com. We're on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio Podcasts. And uh, please review us. We would love a review. We'd love a rating. Um, and uh, we'll give you a shout out if you do. What's so yeah. funny? Please, please review us. Please review us. <laughs> Just do it. I'm desperate. So. <laughs> That hey, has been hey, episode cheer, Cheers 26. to the reviews, Brandon. Cheers. Right here. Cheers. Cheers to the reviews. Yeah. Michael's drinking. Is that a Powerade? Or is that a vitamin water? Vitamin water. <laughs> yeah. Go drink your vitamin water. Do some more forearm curls or whatever the hell you were doing no, right around. Oh, no, I hurt myself. Yeah. That's what happens, buddy. That's what happens. You just overdo it. You just. <laughs> oh, man. Well, again, episode 26, Wade Box, the best number 26. That is episode number 26. Michael Burns, any thoughts for our friends, families, viewers, listeners, anybody who still made it an hour and a half into our podcast? Let's go.